9.3 is on area inside a polar curve. In order for us to talk about area inside a polar curve, we first have to think about the way that we actually create and utilize a graph in terms of theta. So the actual curve that we are looking at is created by using r and theta. So what I mean by that is that this piece of function here, or this piece, this arc, this arc here is created by rotating our r length, which is here, at theta degrees. And we could call this delta theta or theta 2 minus theta 1. We can call that delta theta. So the way that we're generating this piece of arc that we're talking about finding the area inside that curve of is by rotating r around some angle delta theta. Now, if you remember in the rectangular world, what we did when we were finding the area under a curve is we thought about it in terms of Riemann sums, and we thought about breaking up little individual rectangles and adding the area of all of those rectangles together. The problem here is that we aren't going to have rectangles that go down to the x-axis. In fact, we don't even have an x-axis. We have an, an r and a theta here. But what we can do is instead of thinking about individual rectangles, we could think about this as individual sector areas, right? So a sector is just a wedge that is cut out of a circle. That's a little bit of geometry re review for you there. So we can think about the area of this entire sector using the area formula for sector. So the area formula for sector is just pi r squared times the angle divided by 2 pi, right? The amount, so if I made this into a whole circle, terribly drawn. If I made that into a whole circle, pi r squared would be the entire area, and I would need to multiply that by the angle we're talking about over 2 pi, the amount of the circle that we are finding the area of. That's how I find the sector area. So if we apply what we know here, these pi's here and here are going to divide out, so we can actually simplify this formula a bit to be 1 half pi, sorry, 1 half theta times r squared. So we can say that this is the area of a sector. And this isn't anything new. This is just a little bit of geometry. But what we want to think about is how can we apply this to calculus when we have a curve that maybe isn't just nice like this. This is very clearly a piece of a circle here. What if we had a curve that looked more like part of a pedal, which is definitely something we can see in polar coordinates. So let's briefly talk about the rationale of sort of applying the idea of a Riemann sum into a polar world, which will help us come up with the exact value of a polar area, the integral that we're gonna use to do this. So the idea here is that we can't divide into rectangulars in the way that we did in rectangular coordinates. We have to cut up our piece of whatever we're finding the area of, our partial petal or half of a whatever it is that we're looking at, we need to cut that up into sectors. So again, we can't use rectangles in the way that we did with rectangular functions first semester. What we need to do is think about this as if we were cutting each of these into a sector area and adding those sector areas together. But if we want this to be perfect, if we want this to be the exact area, we need to have an infinite number of sectors or an infinite number of little pi wedges, so to speak. So that leads us to the idea of the exact value of polar area, right? Because anytime we're talking about an infinite number of something like this, that leads us to the idea of integration. So let's look down here at that exact polar area formula. You do need to know this. But I think that this idea is going to make a lot of sense. We're saying half of the radius squared times d theta. So this d theta is replacing the theta in our original sector area formula because that's what we're integrating with respect to. We're talking about the change in theta. That's what's changing as we're calculating this infinite amount of area. As we're calculating the error area of the infinite sectors. That's why there's a d theta there instead of a theta. So again, this idea comes from more sectors, meaning an infinite number of sectors, and the idea of Riemann sums, which leads us to integration. And that's really what this entire lesson is about. How do I use this polar area 
integral, how do I evaluate the exact polar area? And one thing that I just want to remind you or let you know up front is that polar graphs have a lot of symmetry and symmetry is your friend. Symmetry means that you might not have to integrate such a large region because you could multiply one petal by however many petals we want to find the area of, or you could multiply something by two if you only, if it's easy to identify the first half of the function. And I'll show you really what I mean more in, in terms of the context of these problems in these examples. So what I want to focus on, number one, is that you really get to see what these graphs look like and how they behave. So I'm going to pull in um, so the Desmos app so that you can see what this looks like. And really the hardest part in these problems is figuring out the bounds. Your real challenge in this lesson is going to be having to find the bounds to give you the area that you're looking over. You're gonna use your calculator to actually evaluate each of the integrals, but you're gonna show the work for setting up the integrals and finding the bounds. All right, let's go ahead and look at example one. So we are being asked to find the area inside one of the loops of r equals cosine of two theta. So let's go ahead and see what this graph looks like. So I'm gonna let it sort of animate so you can see. This is a petal graph. It has four symmetric petals, <clears throat> and we are being asked to find the area of one petal. So there's a handful of ways that you could go about doing this. First of all, you could integrate this from zero to two pi and then divide that area by four. That will give you the area that, is, that we're talking about, right? From zero to two pi will give you the entire four petals. So you could find the area from zero to two pi, and you could divide that area by four to give you the area of one petal. Let's think of some other ways we could calculate this area. Well, we could also figure out, let's kind of watch it go and then stop it as it goes. So the thing that's a little challenging, other than me pushing the stop button here, apparently, is that this doesn't, when this graph starts, it doesn't make one full petal all the way through. So watch that again. It actually loops around and it makes this bottom petal down here, it makes that full one first. So you could try and figure out where that petal starts and stops. That's another way you could do it. You could calculate the area of that one petal. You could also notice that when does it hit the axes? Right there, which we could figure out is probably gonna be pi over two or pi over four. You could figure out where it stops here. You could find this little area, which is half of the pedal, and you could double it. Personally, on this problem, I actually think it's easiest to find the entire area from zero to two pi and to divide that by four. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's move this graph out of our way. So we can, I'm not going to sketch the curve for you here because it, obviously we graphed it over here and you can see it there. But so what we're going to do is we're going to find the area from 0 to 2 pi and we're going to divide that area by 4. All right, so the area is going to equal 1 fourth because we're dividing by 4 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine of 2 theta squared d theta. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my graphing calculator and figure out what this integral is. And actually, before I do that, something from my formula is missing, this one half. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And I'm gonna add it outside of my integral because I just really don't feel like putting it inside. It doesn't make any difference, it's just a scalar. So if I compute this area on my calculator and then divide by eight, I end up getting 0 0.392699, so 0.392 would be our area. So again, using that symmetry, identifying how to manipulate this in the way that best meets your needs is gonna be really helpful. So for me, just integrating from zero to two pi and then dividing by the number of pedals there were seemed like the least amount of work as opposed to trying to figure out exactly where this half pedal started and stopped here. So let's go ahead and look at number two. All right, so let's check out the graph of theta sine theta. And we are going to be asked to find the area of the interior loop of that value. So go ahead, you can pause the video and sketch this on your own paper. But we are being asked to find this area in here, the area of the inside loop. There's a handful of ways that we could do this. We could find the big area and subtract 
that from the little area. But I think the best option here is to figure out when does this loop start and stop? Because then we can just find the area inside that loop. So let's see if I'm going to restart this. Whoops. Let's see if we can find where that starts and stops. So it does the big loop. Nope, it does the little loop first. Stop. Oop. Okay, I'm really bad at that. It does the big loop second. So that means I can start my integral at zero. I know this much. I can start at zero. It goes around, around, around. I need to figure out where to stop. So I'm going to mess with these, this a little bit. I'm going to actually see what happens if I make this go from zero to pi. And let's erase my little drawing there. That's making it hard to see what's going on. OK, so oh, and I guess I should actually modify the equation that I want to modify which is not that one up there, it's this one down here. Let's have it stop at pi. Perfect, that is exactly the loop that I wanted. So that means that I can just evaluate this integral from zero to pi. I don't have to use any symmetry. That's exactly the amount of area that I'm looking for, and I just identified my bounds. So let's move this graph out of the way. I'm gonna find the integral, the area, is gonna be the integral from zero to pi of one half times r, which is theta sine theta squared d theta. And if I grab a calculator and I put this in there, I end up getting that this area is 2.191. A couple common errors here, forgetting about the 1 half, forgetting about the squared sign when you're typing in your integral. So really take your time. Make sure you're setting this up correctly. Make sure you're plugging it into your calculator correctly and that you're applying the squared sign to the entire r value. You might need to add parentheses to do that. Let's look at another example. All right, number three on the back says, and it has the calculator little asterisk there, sketch each graph from your screen and set up all integrals, then use your calculator to solve. So you can go ahead and see here that this is going to be a flower graph and it has eight petals. We are being asked to find the area inside one loop of this function. So a couple ways to do this. You could find the entire area and you could divide by eight. Or you could try and figure out what the bounds are. And let's see what happens if I actually just have this run. Let's see if it makes one whole petal first. It does. So it's also possible that we could figure out when it finishes one petal and then not have to divide by eight. Really, it's up to you what's easier or what you prefer. So I'm going to try pi over two and see if that actually kind of wraps up one pi over two. If that gives me a whole petal, nope, that gives me two petals. So I could integrate from zero to pi over two, and then I could divide that by two, since that would give me the area of two petals, and I only want one petal. My next guess would be pi over four, and it, that does look like it works. So again, there's multiple approaches on this problem. You could integrate all the way from zero to two pi, and since there are eight loops, you could then divide that by eight. Or you could actually find the area of one loop, which looks like it goes from zero to pi over four. And since on the first question that we went over, I did all the way to two pi on this one, I'm gonna go just from zero to pi over four. So my graph really helped me identify those bounds. So my integral, the area is gonna be one half times the integral from zero to pi over four of sine of four theta squared d theta. Then you're going to grab your calculator and this should give you one point, sorry, 0.196 as your area. All right, let's go ahead and look at number four. And if you want to pause the video, take your time to graph here. I know that I already sort of preloaded all of these graphs for myself just to make things easier on us, but you're using a graphing calculator and you got to spend the time to get comfortable using that graphing calculator. So now I'm going to graph r equals, oops, not that one, theta cosine of theta. And this is asking us for the interior loop. And I'm going to move this a little bit so that you can see it. And here we go. So we're being asked for the interior loop here, the inside loop, which here, let me get my pointer out. 
this loop right in here is the loop that we are finding the area of. So again, I'm going to let it run so that we can see sort of the order in which, almost like with parametric equations, we can see the way in which it goes around. So here, it looks like that inner loop is being formed first. That is very, very helpful for us. So we know we can integrate from zero to wherever that first loop is formed. So I'm going to mess with my D values here and see if I can figure out where I want this to stop. So I'm going to try pi over 2 first. Oops. So pi over 2. Too much. So now I'm going to try pi over 4. Oh, I guess it would help if I was actually doing this on the correct equation, wouldn't it? So I want to try pi over 2. Oh, perfect. It does look like it stops at pi over 2. So we're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 2. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video, set up your integral, do it on your calculator, and make sure you get the same answer as I do so you can unpause the video once you're there. So hopefully you had time to try that out. There's the setup of the integral, and when you do it on your calculator, you should get 0.126. All right, I encourage you to pause the video for number five. You can actually access this Desmos activity. I put a link to it in Google Classroom in the notes. So you can play around with the graph, but see if you can find the bounds on your own and then unpause the video and see how you did. All right, here we go. So let's see what this full graph looks like. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see it better. Number five is asking us to find the area of the top half of this little figure eight looking shape. Um, and it asks us, how can we easily find the entire area? Well, we could obviously integrate from 0 to 2 pi to get the entire area. It looks like we could integrate from 0 to pi to get half of the area. So we could always find the, half, the first half, and then we could double it. Or in theory, use the area formula and not divide by 2 if we were looking for both pieces. So let's go ahead and write that out. The bounds are going to be 0 to pi if we're just finding the upper half. So the area would be 1 half times the integral from 0 to pi of our r value squared d theta. When you plug that in on your calculator, you should get 7.068. This is the area of the top half. If we wanted the whole area, we could just double that. And that would give us 14.137. Or we could just do the integration from 0 to 2 pi. All right, pause the video. Check out the graph for number 6. See if you can find the bounds for the integral and do the integration on your calculator. Then unpause the video and see how you did. All right, for number six, we're finding the area of the largest petal. And it looks like if you manipulate this a little bit, you can get that the largest petal, which is the bottom one, right? The whole shape ends up having two more petals, which I'm just going to sketch on here, over here. Terrible sketch, I know. Um, but the largest petal is this bottom one. And if you play around with the bounds, which you can do on your calculator as well, we're going to be integrating from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. So area is 1 half of the integral of pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 of our radius, which is 4 cosine of 2 theta sine of, of theta squared d theta. Sorry, I ran out of space there. And when you plug that in on your calculator, you are going to get 0 0.580 as your area. Now remember, you could also have just done half, which would have been from pi over 4 to pi over 2, and then you could have doubled that as well. That would have been another option on finding the area here. You need to do what's easiest for you to see, to visualize, and to understand. All right, very last problem. Go ahead and read through it, pause the video and see how far you can get, and then unpause the video and we can work through it together. All right, here is the graph for number 7. Definitely a weird looking graph. There is some symmetry with happening, happening within it, but only within each individual petal, right? None of these petals are the same area. The first question asks us to find the combined area of the two smaller petals. And if, let's watch this sort of form. If we watch the order in which this is happening, it looks like the two smaller petals happen first. Each petal as it goes further gets, us, gets a little bit bigger. So to find that area, we can integrate from 0 to pi. 0 to pi got us both petals on the left-hand side. So 
To find the combined area of the two smaller petals, we can take one half of the integral from zero to pi of r squared d theta. And when you put that into your calculator, you're gonna get 9.942. 9 we are actually gonna skip part B and move on to part C. Use a derivative to find the point on the curve that is furthest from the pole. So we don't really need this graph right now. I'm gonna move this graph out of the way and I'm actually gonna do part C down here where I have some more space. So what I want you to do is I actually want you to put your calculator in function mode and I want you to graph this as a function so that y1 is 2x sine of 2x and y2 is the derivative of y1. So go ahead and pause the video and set that up in your calculator. Once you have this set up in your calculator, you're gonna need to use the second trace feature, second trace, to find all of the different places where the derivative is equal to zero. So all of the zeros of the derivative. So when you graph, you're actually going to only graph y2, and then you're going to be looking for where your graph crosses the x-axis between 0 and 2 pi. So you're finding all of the zeros of the derivative using your gra graphing calculator between 0 and 2 pi. So pause the video and go ahead and do that. It's going to take you a little bit of time. So I'm going to make a little table of my candidates. Now remember that we always have to consider the endpoints as well. So we need to consider zero, we need to consider two pi. Using the second trace feature on your calculator to find the zeros, the other zeros, 1 1.0142.457, 3.989, 5.543, and then obviously two pi. And if you're having trouble finding those zeros, swing by student support, I'd be happy to help you see how to use your calculator to find those zeros. But what you're really doing is you're graphing the derivative, you're hitting second trace and finding the zeros. You're gonna have to do it multiple times to find each of those zeros between zero and two pi. Once you've done that, you can actually go into the table feature, turn your Y1 on because we wanna know what the value of R is for each of these theta values so that we can figure out which of those R values is the, is the largest. And remember, we're talking about distance. So even if R is negative, we're looking for the largest absolute value. So go ahead and type each of those values in for theta and figure out what R is. So here we get zero, zero, negative 4.81, 7.916, negative 11.04, and zero. So the answer to this question, the point that is the furthest from the pole is this point right here. Even though the R value is negative, that point is still the furthest away from the pole. And last but not least, part D, which I'm gonna do up here, I should have switched to C and D. I'm gonna do part D up here where I have more space. Find the area of the largest petal. So the area is going to be one half times the integral. The largest petal goes from three pi over two to two pi. And then the curve or the R value, two theta sine of two theta. And that whole thing is gonna be squared and we're integrating with respect to theta. And when you do that on your calculator, you should get 47.604. So big ideas in this section, that area formula in general, getting comfortable on your calculator with figuring out the bounds of the integral is really the most challenging part in this section because the rest of the math is gonna happen on the calculator. You're gonna be either just setting these up or you're going to be actually evaluating the integral using your calculator. So I don't want you to stress too much about the integration, but mostly about making sure you can manipulate the graph on your calculator to find the bounds of the appropriate part that you're looking for. Also, don't forget that you can use symmetry if it helps you. If it doesn't help you, then just integrate over the portion that you're looking to integrate over. So write down any questions you have, and I look forward to supporting you on this in class. Thanks for listening.